assisted by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We now enter into the uh, communion segment of the celebration At of the, the Mass Savior's command, with the singing and of the by Lord's divine Prayer. Teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from no, all distress go over there. as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. And now the bishop will extend the sign of peace as the congregation is invited to do so and we will soon be entering into the communion rite, the fraction of rite of breaking the bread that has been consecrated, and the distribution of Holy Communion to all the faithful that have gathered here today. The symbolic blood and body of Christ. It is the body and blood of Christ. That is our Catholic belief. Not just symbolic, it is. And we see the bishop now offering the sign of peace to his entourage there around the altar and those who are designated community distributors will be coming forward taking their places and then will be um, distributing holy communion you asked earlier about the um, the communion procession taking some more time right. I, I think we have a, a added number of eucharistic ministers priests and bishops and deacons who will be distributing today so it'll accommodate the larger crowd that Normally we wouldn't right. have at the cathedral. And many of them joining us up here on the balcony where we're perched here. Some will be here, yes, yeah. yes. You mentioned Monsignor the Chalice and the significance of the chalice yes. used today. Maybe 
go uh, back to that for folks who are just joining us. The chalice that, that Bishop Thomas is using for this celebration is not a diocesan chalice. We have a very beautiful jeweled chalice that the bishop regularly would use, but he chose to use his personal chalice today because of this feast that he's observing at his installation, the feast of Pope John Paul II. Actually, the Pope in Rome celebrated Mass with his chalice that was a gift to the bishop from his parents at a Mass in 1995. And, um, and he chose to use that chalice today for this celebration of Mass. And so many mentions of St. Pope John Paul II today in memoriam of him yes. and the installation itself. So we mentioned the 22nd of October, why this day was chosen by by Bishop Thomas. Because Bishop was ba basically very touched by Pope John Paul, certainly. He worked in the Vatican at the time when he was Pope, um, so he uh, was named a Monsignor by the Pope. So he has a particular affection for the Holy Father. I did uh, check the bottom of that chalice to see the actual inscription. There is an inscription that says that the Pope did celebrate Mass, and he gives the date, I believe it was October the 14th or 13th of 1995. So. And certainly um, your staff at uh, WTVG 13 has done a fabulous job showing us the beauty of the cathedral. Um, with light enhancements and the like, and uh, certainly is a gem of beauty um, and capturing some of the artwork in the ceiling areas and on the walls, the stained glass windows, the carved wood. It all is truly a, a wonderful tribute to the glory of God. And Dedicated have, in 1940. That is correct. 1940, yes. right? Yes. Uh, but undergoing a major renovation 13, 14 years 1979 ago? 1979 was the renovation. Okay. Yeah, under Bishop Donovan, yes. it was completed. And we right. talk about. Uh, Bishop Thomas here, who said that he's in this for the what he believes will be the long haul. Bishop Blair, 10 years. Bishop Hoffman, 23 years. Yes, yes. Longest tenure yes. of the eight. He would be of the yeah. eight, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And all for their time were, were the men that we needed in our diocese at that particular time. Um, so um, that's, the, that's the mystery of apostolic succession, you know, uh, the choice of the man that becomes the bishop of the diocese and his gifts and abilities to be the, the chief shepherd and the um, spiritual motivator of the people of the diocese. Our viewers are now are watching the bishops taking their communion and then they will also be engaged in the distribution of Holy Communion for all of the faithful. There are some deacons uh, currently walking up to the bishop now for communion and they will be assisting with the communion rite in the side aisles of the cathedral. Uh, and then we'll probably see the Mass begin to make their move around uh, the Cathedral for the Communion Rite. In case you're just joining us, you're watching live coverage of the installation of Bishop Daniel E. Thomas as the eighth bishop in the Toledo Catholic Diocese. Alongside Monsignor Charles Singler, I'm Lee Conklin. Glad you could join us this afternoon been a great day for all of Northwest Ohio, actually.
body of Christ. I mean, body of what Christ. happened here from the beginning, uh, the installation itself, the, the ceremony, a lot of pomp and circumstance. Right. So, how's it going? It's actually going off quite well. Uh, it will be really a great relief when we get to the last procession. Um, but so far, it's actually gone as it was scripted. Okay. You know, uh, I know that uh, you in the television business uh, do a lot of scripting of things. Well, we even do it in the Catholic Church. I can't imagine what it would be like uh, being the scripter, if you will, for the Vatican, for the papal liturgies. But I do know that there is a protocol that's followed just as, as it would be here for the bishop, for the pope. Our viewers might find it interesting that statue of Mary that you see on screen right now uh, with the rosary is an image of Our Lady of the Rosary. And this happens to be October, the month of the rosary. And I'm sure that's why the reason why the bishop made a point to talk about the rosary and the prayer of the rosary. Catholics would know that particular devotion and particularly this month of October is the month of the rosary. And as communion continues, you're looking at some of the shots of this um, incredible cathedral dedicated in 1940. Um, Bishop Stritch had a lot to do with this building. He did. He had much to do with the, with the building uh, and the plan, the final plan. Mm -hmm. I think Bishop Schrems had some hand at least. The first getting, bishop. Yes, having some hand in getting it designed or whatever. And that was Bishop Alter, the third bishop, whose crozier is being right. used by Bishop Thomas today, is the bishop that did the dedication of the cathedral in 1940. And um, yeah, it just is a breathtaking view of, uh, of our cathedral church. You're one of many if you just drive down Collingwood Boulevard. Yes. It really is an incredible view. There's an exterior view. beauty and, a, and a, an internal beauty, certainly, yes. Um, it, it, you, the camera was panning moments ago, the, the stained glass windows, uh, those were uh, came from England, in York and England, where they were crafted. And uh, they're just glorious um, images of saints. Uh, and then, then the, the uh, text of the scriptures in Latin and in English, uh, all pointing towards the mysteries of the rosary and the attention of the rosary. Any musical input, Monsignor Singler? Um, a couple pieces. Um, there was a piece that is going to be, I think it's lined up for the communion ritual here. Uh, in the Spirit's Tether, I believe it's called, and uh, we had a hand in, in working on that one as a, cho a choice. But uh, Paul Monachino, the director of music for the cathedral and our diocesan music coordinator, does a fabulous job in uh, working with our, our diocesan choir, which are basically comprised of uh, music directors from all over the city uh, and the diocese. Some have driven quite a distance to be sure. here today to to provide the musical support and singing of the music that we have for our liturgy today. But Paul has done a fabulous job with the music program here at the cathedral and does a great job, if I can put a, a little bit of a plug in, um, a wonderful music concert here at the cathedral every year and does a fabulous job with that throughout the course of the year. And people have come from far and wide, we mentioned this, when we came on the air at two o'clock uh, from the, the Virgin, Virgin Islands, Islands right? one of the bishops, right? yes. Yes, Cardinal Dolan from New York. Um, it's just a really special day to have all of these wonderful people with us to uh, celebrate this occasion. And when this day ends, and the installation is almost concluded now, uh, as, as we work our way through um, uh, the sacred rite of communion, um, serious work begins for this The work bishop. begins, and yes. I'll tell you, he is ready to go. He is ready to go and uh, is going to be on the move immediately. He's going to be visiting the uh, 1516 deaneries of the diocese prior to Christmas. And so he wants to meet his flock immediately. He didn't wait on that. He probably could have waited till the spring to do something like that. Monsignor, there are 100, 100 something parishes, but explain what the deaneries are. Deaneries are the regional. Of. If you wanted to, uh, to, so the bishop can get a handle on the communities that are in the diocese. Uh, the diocese is broken up in territorial regions and we call those deaneries and there is a priest that's appointed as the dean of those local regional areas and they are the reporters if you will back to the bishop how the faith is going in those communities 
when he needs a statistic of some sort, if there's a priest that's ill or some particular issue going on in a regional area, the dean is the one that is the go-between the bishop and, his, and their congregations in that regional area. So his desire, Bishop Thomas's desire, is to visit those regional areas to meet his flock, to pray with them, and to have a reception and a, a gathering following those. Um, and he's got quite a few to do, so he's going through 19 counties, if you can break that up in various regions. He's got a, a, a lot of, uh, he's going to put a lot of miles on that new Jeep he's yes, got. Yes, I was going to say that when he, he came here trading in his vehicle for a Toledo-built Jeep, we understand. I'm not sure if it's a Cherokee or a It Wrangler. is a Cherokee, yes. It would look pretty cool if he was tooling around in a Spets yeah. Wrangler, too. Would, yeah. yeah. But it is a Cherokee. Yes. All this being said, when it comes down to administrative work and reaching out work, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How is the job split? Does it does the individual bishop determine? I think the bishop much? determines it, but I think this man is driven to the point where he his desire is to interact with people. And I think we're gonna see him in the field of rubbing elbows with the sheep. Yeah. You know? Um, I think he's a man who is going to make a difference with his message and with the fact that he inter interfaces and interacts with the people, you know, in Northwest Ohio. And we saw that the first day he was here, he went right. to Helping Hands of St. Louis. That was yes. one of the first yes. stops. Yep. In contrast, the message is, comes always back to uh, what the Catholic Church is about. But there are incredible contrasts, I think, outwardly with Bishop Blair and Bishop Thomas. Would you not agree? Each bishop has his own style. Mm -hmm. I lived with Bishop Blair uh, for 10 years in the residence. I served side by side with him as the director of worship and also as his vocation director. He had a great style of, of, of work and leadership. Bishop Thomas brings a whole different angle to that with his gifts and his abilities. I consider it a great honor and privilege to work with both of those fine prelates. Um, and I'm anxious to have these next weeks and months the opportunity to work with Bishop Thomas. I was appreciative, by the way, where they also wear the hat as being the vocation director for the diocese, in addition to being the director of worship. Uh, the bishop mentioned when he was talking about, in his homily about the seminarians being vocation directors. Oh, he couldn't, that could have been a dream further from the vocation for him to say something like that, because they truly are the men that are in the field and are the ones that are truly, I think, setting in people's young men's hearts a desire to be um, priests. Speaking directly to them during the homily. Yes, yes. And that was a nice uh, 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 twist to his preaching, as that he did address the various groupings as a pointed way of acknowledging them and saying to them, as I noticed he said several times, I love you, I want to serve you, um, as a gesture that this bishop is one who truly desires to interact with his people. And all going back to the readings, shepherding, shepherding. the flock, when he, he talked with T.K. Barker of the Toledo Blade, he said, I want to consider, I consider myself a parish priest. Yes, yes. Even something parishes now. Yes. So, quite a challenge. He realizes that he has to do the administrative part, mm -hmm. but he, he's a priest first and foremost, which is a, as a servant of others. And I think that's the approach, that's the segue that the, and perspective that this bishop is going to serve us, uh, is as a servant of others. He'll do the administrative part and do it well, but his first and foremost understanding and the approach that he's taking is, I am a priest and a servant of others in the person of Jesus Christ. This, by the way, is the piece that I recommended for the service today. Yeah, it's very good. A beautiful view from the balcony of the cathedral looking at the sanctuary area. Uh, actually, the communion rite is actually over at this point. We've come to the conclusion of that, and the bishop will stand and offer a concluding prayer momentarily, and, um, and then offer the final blessing, uh, and then we'll see him turn at his chair towards that image, that beautiful image of the coronation of the Blessed Virgin Mary that's painted on the back wall of the cathedral, which is the centerpiece of the booklet and the invitations, kind of the centerpiece of our cathedral church, um, the ancient Latin hymn called the Salve Regina, or Hail Holy Queen.
the bishop now is just taking a moment of some reflection, having received the um, Blessed Sacrament and inviting others through his uh, quiet prayer and reflection uh, to um, approach now the concluding prayer of the Mass and then the blessing and then the um, dismissal. I get a parish announcement about now, right. but that's probably not coming. Uh, right? Probably not. You're absolutely right. It's not a normal protocol that you'd find in the parish. It's, it's a uh, opportunity now just to kind of be reflective, and, um, and the server is already at the bishop's chair. I think he's probably waiting for some of these other yeah. bishops and priests that have distributed Holy Communion to come back to their places. There he's standing now. So we'll approach it with the communion prayer, and then the blessing, and then the dismissal. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of charity with which blessed John Paul II burned ardently as he gave himself unceasingly for your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Queen of Heaven, Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, of the Blessed Mother, the fifth glorious mystery of the Rosary as the Bishop was speaking of the mysteries. And that is the image that is currently being sung to as a way of gratitude and asking for Mary's intercession of prayer upon the diocese and upon Bishop Thomas as he leads the diocese. And now we'll have the closing hymn and the procession will commence. Or as we say in liturgical terms, the recessional. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, which was a very, is a very popular 
Christian hymn, not just a Catholic hymn, but one that is a very popular hymn. Typically, the recessional will not start in Mass until the bishop goes by. Yes. Correct? And he's going to stand now in front of the altar to allow the other ministers who led him in the entrance procession to let them recess out of the cathedral. So they're already moving down the main aisle and he'll come and stand right here in front of the altar, allowing them to leave before him. that Cardinal Dolan made an exit to the left, probably to make a flight back to New York, so he will not probably be in the procession that we're seeing here on TV right now. Uh, the Knights, Knights of Columbus? Columbus. Yeah. Yes. Very supportive of the work of the bishop and very influential in vocation work and educational pursuits in the diocese undertaken. Um, our uh, Knights in our diocese in Northwest Ohio are wonderful, great supporters of the bishop, and priests and uh, the laity on uh, promoting life issues and the like. They really do a great job. And there you can see the deacons walking out in procession as they came in the entrance procession. And then they'll be followed by the priests and then the bishops and archbishops. And the bishop holding that crozier? That, was, uh, that is so the crozier that right? uh, the third bishop of Toledo used. So it's a, a family heirloom that's being used today, which is really wonderful. The eighth bishop holding the crozier of the third bishop of Toledo. And connections going back to the, to the, the life history of Bishop Thomas now, with yes. the crozier, yes. the chalice. Yes, yes, a lot, of, a lot of spiritual